I'd like to tell you a little bit about what makes up clay. Uh, clays are made from weathered igneous rock, mostly granite, and it is one of only two mineral resources on Earth that actually are renewable. Clay and sand are both being formed geologically faster than they're being used up. So it really is a renewable mineral resource. Clays are flat particles weathered off of rock, and that flat particle is what causes it to behave the way it does. And the clays that we use here are mostly based in, uh, in rocks that have kaolin in them, which is a, uh, you can think of it as being like a stack of playing cards. And this shape of the particle is what makes clays behave the way they do. These flat particles have to be lined up in order for the clay to be strong. Water gets between these particles and makes them adhere to each other and also makes the clay plastic. This is why clay, when it's wet, is flexible and workable, and when it's dry, greenware is extremely brittle. The clays all mature at different temperatures, so when you fire clays, different clays, depending on their composition, will fuse or become vitrified at different temperatures. You have earthenware clays, which never really become fully vitrified, heated too much, they'll actually melt. Stoneware clays, one of the most common types of clays used, will, will vitrify and usually are water impermeable once glazed. High fire clays, like the Chinese porcelains, uh, become completely vitrified, but need a, a high, very high temperature in order for that to happen. Different clays vary in the quantities and types of three different components. There are silicates, which include the feldspars that I mentioned earlier. Fluxes, which lower the, the melting point of the clay and make it vitrify at a lower temperature and refractory materials that make the clay hang together, and this would include grog and sand that are often added to clays to give it more grit. Clays also vary in terms of plasticity, which is how much they'll flex and how much water they can tolerate, porosity, which is how well the water will travel through it, and also color. There are colored clays. Those colored clays often have oxides added to them, iron oxide, for example, and brown or red clays. And some clays, like porcelain clays, are almost pure kaolin, which is why they're white. And it's also why they don't tolerate much in the way of extra water.